Hi, my name is Jeff Pagano, and welcome to the Harpen and Rugby Preview Show. And joining me to look ahead to Leinster's next assignment is someone making his 29th pot of parents. Uh, welcome back to Mr. Kino Mullor. Hey, Jeff, how's it going? Great to be here. Uh, indeed, good to have you. Now, before we harp on the Champions Cup, Kino, um, we had some announcements made during the week, like the Irish Six Nations squad to be captained by Mr. Peter Armani. What did you make of it all? Yeah, yeah, I like the squad and I like the uh, I like the the, the captain. Um, twenty five of the thirty four players there returned from the Ruby World Cup squad. Uh, injuries and retirements causing some of those. Um, but you know, every Six Nations is a must win for the IRFU. We're never going to see, uh, I think, massive squad changes. I don't think uh, you see more in the summer tour. Um, and a first up match away against France is a massive challenge, even with Dupont missing. Um, and it'll probably decide the tournament. Um, of the fresher faces, Bear, Timney, Nash, Larmer, all deserving, I think, on current form. Tough on some of the fine back rows around the country and the provinces, uh, but it's, you know, our most stacked area, I think, uh, of any uh, across the teams. And uh, yeah, great seeing Jaeger and Ahern and Prendergast getting some exposure on those kind of training spots um, for the broader squad involvement. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe one of them getting a call up even before the end of the tournament. But uh, yeah, Omani's a great shout. Like, experience respected in the squad uh his reading of the game his ability to kind of pull miracles out of his arse when he needs to um and and he's just he's he's such a farrell captain like he's he's, he's pure exactly what farrell loves in a, in, a, in a player so yep can't fault it and if we win this if we win another six nations he knows the way to gary ringrose's gaff anyway so uh he can he can, <laughs> he can lead the way there you know no seriously no it's uh not you know like I don't, not a lot of changes i don't see why there should be a need for a lot of changes i mean there, there's um be a little bit different in the coaching box but um uh apart from that it's the it, it seemed like the, the the logical step to he he was he seemed kind of next in line in terms of the leadership group um and if you if you if it was a thing of if he wanted it do you know what I mean? It was like, and uh, he was he was a natural leader. He's done it before, and uh, it just seemed to make sense all around. Yeah, this is it. I mean, in terms of the senior leadership group, he's absolutely, he was kind of up there with Johnny side by side in my mind. And, uh, you know, lo losing Johnny, and this is our first major tournament without him in, oh, in <laughs> over a decade now. So that's a pretty big change in and of itself. So to go with someone who's resilient and consistent and part of that senior management team. Yeah, absolutely. Hang on, did we not read the script here? We're Leinster fans. We're supposed to be outraged. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on here. No, it's, harum, it's, harum, harum. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Listen, um, we'll, we'll move on now, and it's uh, time to look at our feature match of the week, which is, of course, Leicester Tigers. The Leinster in round four of the 23-24 Investec Champions Cup. It's taking place at the Mighty Mouthful, which is the Mattioli Woods Welford Road Stadium on Saturday, January the 20th, kicking off at 3.15 p.m. TV coverage in Ireland is on TNT Sports 1, and as ever, You'll find the full listings for the weekend at harpandrugby.com. Just click the Rugby on TV tab. Leinster named their match day 23 at lunchtime on Friday. If you're watching on YouTube, it's right there in the screen. Or uh, for pod listeners, it's in the program notes. Now, Kino's picked out a few uh, points from the Leinster lineup, starting with uh, Harry Byrne. Yeah, with Frawley, unfortunately, still out uh, due to that uh, knock on the back. Uh, this is this is another big moment for Harry Byrne. Um you know, his ability to manage this game, to make strategic decisions correctly and connect with the back line, it's gonna it's gonna impact this match uh hugely, I would say. Um, you know, his form has been a little up and down. I think overall we've seen him improve this season. Like if Harry Byrne had been starting a European a must win European match for us this time last year, I think you would have seen a few more nervous Leinster fans. But I think most people are actually kinda okay with it now <laughs> relatively speaking um you know it's not as much not as much of a worry um and uh yeah i think his his, his form has improved and you've seen that reflected in his call up to the irish squad um so yeah for the day that's in it like we're going to need the win first first and foremost it's the win but we're going to need the bonus point try as well in terms of the seeding um so and the issue with that is our back line hasn't exactly been purring um so the pressure is going to be on him, yeah, to make those good decisions, to bring them to the line, uh, to execute then under that pressure. And that's going to be difficult because this is a big Leicester side. Um, it's a big opportunity for him to prove again that he can do it on the big stage and under big pressure, like that um, La Rochelle away win. Um, 
I don't think I can ever mention that enough or mm. too much. So I'm just going to sleep. La Rochelle away win again one more time to make sure Please it got do. in there. No, feel free. Um, I might but... edit another one in as well, just for good luck, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, you'd never know. There might be another one yet to come the season. <laughs> so we'll see how the round of 16 and that works out. Uh, but yeah, it's a big opportunity. It's um, going to be a lot of pressure. It's going to be a tough game, but um, he has to be able to prove that he can do it on these days if he wants to kind of keep creeping forward. Yeah, I mean, I've said over the years that um, uh, the uh, both Ireland and Leinster uh, teams have been, if you, they've been sort of like a Formula One car that's been custom made for Johnny Sexton to drive, and uh, anyone else is just sort of temporary, is, needs to be able to to temporarily take over. But now it's it's there for for someone to step up, and uh, both Leinster and Ireland, um, it's there for, for someone to just to step up and show that they can do it, and and they they can do do it in their own right. And like you say, Harry has had ups and downs um trying but he said he hasn't had the best of luck with injuries either yeah. um but um like you say that now rochelle win which i will mention again um was it was it was a time when he 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 showed he showed what he could do i mean everyone remembers the bit the frawley kick at the end and that was a big deal but harry harry did have a great outing as well um uh, up to that point you know so um that's but this is another chance. It's a big away match. It's a, you know, uh, there are only four matches and you need this to, 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 we'll talk about this later, but you need as many points as you can to get the highest possible seeding. So um, it's, it's a, definitely a big test for him indeed. Yeah, this is it. I think the pressure is, it's funny with the, with the, the four match format, uh, the way they have it now with the round of 16, the, the pressure isn't on the lower ranked teams to, to consistently perform uh, to the very, very top level. It's on the top seed teams. Mm -hmm. If you want, it's doggy dog, like the top seeds in each of those groups, like Bordeaux and Toulouse are the best examples of teams who are absolutely operating at the pinnacle. You need five points from all of your games if you want to even stand a chance of going well seeded into potential semifinals or quarterfinals down the line. Uh, well, you get the quarterfinals, but the semifinal ones is a different story. So you need to be second out of every team. And that includes two teams that are playing extremely well. So th th I think there's a lot more pressure there than, you know, one win and a couple of bonus points. And I'm sure you'll sc scrape through into the round of 16 and you'll get your, your you'll get your uh, gate money there. And that'll be grand, you know. Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 there's a lot running on every point when, when there's only four matches, indeed, for all that's been said about the format. OK, so um, we'll move on to your second point now, and it's about James Ryan back in the second row. Yeah, co-captain James Ryan returns to the start 15, uh, brings a full international pack right up to top drawer level. Like it doesn't get it doesn't get tastier than that, uh, that one through eight, really. Uh, you know, last week, fair play to Baird for calling the line out from six, uh, like it's a tough thing to do at the top level. It really is. Um, for me, the target distribution was off. It was going to the back too often. It was fairly easily read and we were having a bit of a mare um, at it. Um, but the difference that Ryan made when he came on was immediate. I think we scored off the next line. As soon as he came on, line out and we score. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's he's he, he is a huge difference maker in this pack. Uh, for me, um, and I'm I'm loving the bit of dog that he's developed over the last two years. Um, frankly, the co-captain thing, I don't mind if he has a few uh, harsh uh, words <laughs> in the ref's ear, and uh, you know the ref only wants to speak to head pre prefect Gary afterwards. You know it'll put the idea. It's enough maybe to put a seed of an idea into the ref's head. Then it's worth it. Um, and as for the rest of it, it's a, it's an extremely abrasive and athletic pack. You know. Baird is a uh, a menace at six in the line out and in the loose now as well. I mean, that uh, 60 meter break last week, I know we, you know, Stad didn't uh, exactly send their best and brightest, but uh, nonetheless, like to have your six make a 60 meter break from a, a small gap. And it was it wasn't a straightforward gallop either. It wasn't a thundering. In fairness, that was all I could do when I played it's straight line stuff. <laughs> um, but it was it was it was a lovely run um, with a fair bit of skill to it. And then McCarthy's involvements are going every game as well. Um, Maldi breakdown. His defensive breakdown work is. Yeah, he's, he's savage. Like uh, he's only going to get better. I really do think so. His ceiling is is really quite high. Um. So yeah, I, you'd have you'd have no complaints with that pack or or the bench, frankly. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, we had a couple of issues last weekend, I think a couple of overthrown darts and that, but you also saw just how well things operate when when it does work. And you just, you look at the spine of that pack and, um, or do you just see, you look McCarthy, Ryan, and Baird uh, on, a, an, on a defensive line out. It, it, it's it, it instantly putting them under pressure. But then you also, you remember just the, how important uh, Vanderflair is in our lineouts as well uh, when we have them. And uh, when they're, you know, if they're going wrong or whatever, we can, we, he's such a key, um, key ingredient to um, just getting the move, getting the move going uh, after, after each line out it's uh it's 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 definitely a, a good prospect and as for ryan as a co-captain bring it back you would just wonder did they have a little chat with the referee beforehand is it okay if we name co-captains again are you gonna be are you cool with that now um, yeah well you'll tell us who the ref is now we'll, we'll, we'll us, have an idea of whether they yeah. might uh be willing to put up with the co-captaining or not exactly exactly but uh we'll, we'll see what happens there okay so we'll move on to your third point now and it's about uh, the overall uh how let, we're, that actual format we were talking about how Leinster can actually get that top two seating yeah now this is the state of play basically i thought it was important to cover this off because there's going to be a lot of people one or two results go oddly on the day and everyone's like oh god what does this actually mean for us? so leinster we're we're already qualified for the knockouts that's sorted you know but that's not enough so aiming for the best possible seeding now uh, to secure home advantage through the knockouts hopefully all the way to a semi-final if it happens now any lo- any log points at all would put us safely in the top of our group table that puts you in kind of the group of four from the four top ones are the first four ranked and they're seated between them and then the the two from each table are ranked five through eight and they're kind yeah. of seated with each other um so now any log points will put us safely at the top of our table in, into that kind of one to four bracket um even without a losing bonus point um Leicester would need a bonus point win by 37 plus 37 of the score differential to us to overtake us um, or Stormers would need to make up a 54 point gap. So either case is unlikely, even if we just get a win. Uh, sorry. Even without even without even a losing bonus. Sorry. Mm. Um, and then even with a bonus point win to try and get that top two seeding. We're going to need favors from Munster against Northampton and from Stormers versus Bordeaux. Both of uh, which possible, um, very both possible. Are, yeah, both of which are likely. They're both yeah. they're both odds on favorites with the bookies at the moment. And yeah. um, bookies not liking the look of um, Northampton having to travel to Tomond, uh, which mm. in fairness is difficult from for pretty ask. much any team yeah. at most the best of times. And uh, I think we've yet to see a French team travel to South Africa. Um, I. I haven't seen the lineup for them yet. I don't even know if they're selling, sending a full team. Um, so that remains to be seen. Uh, whether even if they do, they may not travel. You know, it's it's a bit of a big thing uh, and uh, an unusual thing for a team to have to do in the middle of the season. Uh, certainly for a French team, uh, they're not used to it. So, and as we've seen in the URC, it's no great shakes for most Irish teams. Connacht accept it. Apparently, they they're grand with it. Everyone else has a bit of trouble with it. Um. So yeah, it'll be we'll need those two favors to happen um to a to avoid a, an away semi-final if we get that far. Finger, fingers crossed. Well, we have a way of keeping track of all that. We'll have we'll talk about that a bit later, uh, a bit later in the pod if that's okay. But what, now we're going to move on and um look at the uh, Leicester Tigers lineup. Yeah, um, Tigers have Hassel Collins and Liebenberg back, both coming back from injuries, uh, which is a pretty decent boost for them. Um, and then they've got, I mean, they've got Pollard and Visa, like t- two very proven international operators. Um, and it can, kind of gives you an indication of of the kind of game Leicester are going to be bringing. It's going to be quite physical and fairly kick heavy. Um. It's a very strong selection they've gone with, and they're obviously they're they are tilting at this. There's there's no second string here at all, so it's going to be it's going to be a pretty physical encounter, I think. Um, always is, I think, with Leicester. <laughs> I don't think he, uh, they are they are definitely one of the sides that uh, cares about Europe, um, for sure at any given point in time. So, it's going to be a bit of a ding dong, I think. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talk about how often we we're playing La Rochelle this weather, but uh, we play the Tigers quite a bit as well, and they'll definitely want to um, 
that want to do. I mean, they haven't had things going their own way in the Premiership this season, uh, but they they definitely will want to put one over us, and they'll be motivated for sure. And uh, you know, Le- Leinster, you know, th- we're going to have to keep those levels up, which we have been, uh, to be fair, for the most part. Uh, keep keep those levels of uh, of. of you know, of intensity and everything at, at, up at the top, if we're going to get those points. So it, it, it could be, it could be a good, a good, one of the better ties of the weekend. I'll be, I'll be said. I reckon so as well. Actually, I think it's going to be a pretty decent match, like trying to approach it from a neutral point of view. I mean, yeah. you look at, you look at the quality they have. Uh, I mean, you got Stewart in there. Uh, Scott and Kelly been going well in the centers for them. You got Pollard at 10. Uh, you got Montoya uh, in the in the front row, in the, for, which is always going to be value for money. Um, you got a back row then of uh, Liebenberg, Raffle, and Visa. Um, and you got you know someone like Ben Youngs on the bench as well. The bench probably isn't as strong as it could have been, um, mm. which is a, a little bit of hope. I'm thinking maybe we might see a couple of late uh, late scores for Leinster, perhaps, uh, given that we have a fairly decent bench. Yeah, fingers crossed. Touch wood, all of that malarkey. Um, yeah, it promises to be a pretty decent lineup. Well, one thing's for sure: when when we when we've heard the half hour a preview for, on TNT Sports, it's going to be the matchup for the ages. We two great, two two all time European greats going going head to head. So we'll be we'll be we'll be re- we'll be revved up for it by kickoff time. That's for sure. The Giants of Leinster meet the Titans of Leicester, making both go. teams seem normal sized. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Okay, so listen, we're going to move on and have a quick look at the officials. It's Andrew uh, Fiardi from uh, Italy. It's an all-Italian uh, crew there. The weather for Leicester on uh, Saturday afternoon at the moment is, is said to be, it's going to be cloudy and breezy. Uh, tropical six degrees compared to what we've had in Dublin for the past week. Um, but it looks like it's going to... Yeah, looks like it's uh, going to be kind of windy there as well, though, by the, going by the forecast and just a 25% chance of rain. So we'll see how that pans out. OK, so we're going to move on and um, just have a look at the just of all the other matches this weekend. Which one uh, caught your eye the most? There's a few, in yeah. fairness. Like it's it's the last round. It's, it's always good crack in the last round, to be honest, even in the old. Um, actually, I kind of still. Well, I mean, the old format was better. I'm not going to get into it now. Uh, even with the dead rubbers in there, there was always some there was always absolute crackers that matters. Uh, but uh, yeah, most of the matches matter <laughs> this weekend because of the format, the way it is. Uh, you got Connacht uh, v Bristol and Ulster v Quinns. They're both must wins um, for Connacht and Ulster. Uh, try and get uh, any chance going through to the round of 16. Uh, Ulster really facing an uphill challenge there versus Quinns. Connacht probably fairly fancy versus Bristol, but they will need other results to go their way as well uh, to get through. Not saying it couldn't happen, but, you know, Connacht fans will be glued to the box if they do get that win. Um, Munster v Saints and Bulls versus Beagles, both very important um, matches for Leinster seeding uh, should we do the job against Leicester so it'll be yeah interesting to see if uh, Bordeaux can turn up in South Africa if they do that could be a corker because they are playing amazing <laughs> rugby at the moment and Bulls are no <laughs> no easy easy match uh, so that would um, be a nice matchup of styles as well actually um, so very tough one for B- for Bordeaux I think uh, but uh, could make for, for a great watch um, and then other than that, you could actually just watch Toulouse do their thing um, at a team. <laughs> that's it. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's that's the last chance to see offer. DuPont yeah. before he goes off to the other code. Uh, see, see, see what he see what other kingdoms he can conquer. That's it. I know there's def- de- definitely plenty to choose from. OK, so that brings us to putting your head on the block and uh, your actual prediction for uh, the match in Leicester. Yeah, I think it's going to be a well-contested physical game, um, but I think Leinster are going to take it with a try bonus point by 10 points. All right, good. Okay, with fingers crossed that happens. Okay, so uh, before we wrap it up, uh, if you're like us and you love all the nerdery that goes with the final round of the Champions Cup with all the per- permutations and points required and uh, capital and lowercase Q's and whatnot. Uh, Kino has done a handy spreadsheet for following the scores throughout the day. So check it out. There's a QR code there in the screen. Uh, plus, or, or if you're on audio, I'll leave a link in the program notes. So that, that was a bit of fun putting that together, Kino, isn't it? I've, I've never been QR coded before. <laughs> there you go. I feel, I feel, I feel blessed. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was a bit of crack. I've, I've put stuff like this together before. Um, so I had something to work off for this, this year's version. Um, it was just something that I need, need. I wanted myself because trying to work out how things were, it's like which 
is it try bonus points? As the, so, I just you can literally update it in real time as the tries are going in and and see how the how the final sixteen looks. Although yeah. the way that it looked after the last round, I wasn't so happy. Um, <laughs> ended up with Leinster at home to La Rochelle, so hopefully, hopefully that'll get uh, th- 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 that'll change a little bit after this week's results. But uh, it's a good way of keeping track of them all the same. Yeah, yeah, you can throw as many spreadsheets as you like it, but you can't get away from Murphy's Law. Absolutely, indeed. Okay, listen, we're going to leave it there, Kino. Thanks a million for coming on for a chat. Hope to see you on again soon, man. Absolutely. And uh, many thanks to you all for tuning in to our latest preview show. Enjoy the match wherever you are. Be sure to follow us on all the usual social media channels, including Blue Sky. And we will, of course, have a wrap pod for you this weekend, recording on Sunday evening. So hopefully you'll help us out by liking, sharing, and subscribing. In the meantime, stay safe, everyone. Slán.